Hello and welcome to another Big Bang. Go on, Violet, see if you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. In this programme, the strange but true story of an inventor's race against time to save the life of an American president. We're going to terrify you silly with our scary, hairy hand. And today's big question, just what is it that makes a twister twist? <laughs> Keep trying. But first, a trick. <laughs> Which is really annoying, ah! actually. Come on, Violet, it's easy. All you have to do is to blow a ball of paper into the bottle. <laughs> it's not as easy as you think, cos I put the paper in and then when I blow at it, the air goes past the paper, hits the bottom of the bottle and then scoots the paper back in my face. Have another go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Violet, it's really easy to do this. All you need, right, is a little brain power. A little wind, a little application, and a little straw. Yeah. Can't be done without a straw, but if you've got a straw and you blow gently, watch. Oh, Goes in every that's time. That's so sneaky. OK, I've got a trick for you. One bottle. Yeah. One piece of paper. Yeah. Bottle on the piece of paper, and on top of that... Yes. ..a pineapple. <laughs> I was wondering what happened to my pineapple. OK, what you've got to do is get the paper out from underneath the bottle and the pineapple, you can only touch the paper. No, that's easy. Just a matter of snatching the paper away. Three, mm -hmm. two, one. Hup, done it, see? No. Uh, yeah, okay. you see, the bottle it. and the pineapple are supposed to stay put. <laughs> and I'll show go. you how it's done if you stay put till the end of the show. Yeah, this time. Watch out! is my scuttling beetle. You have to loop the string round something solid, like I've used a kitchen tap. And then when you pull each side of the string, off she scuttles. She works because the holes at the back are further apart than the holes at the front. So, when you pull one end of the string, then it causes it to be tense and the beetle kind of twists forward. And so when you do one string, then the other, off she goes. Ah! Bye. Yes? yes? I found a giant, horrible oh, beetle good. in the living room. That was meant for you. It's for our beetle drive. Come on. Beetle drive? Gentlemen, start your beetles. Three, two, one. Boom. And they're off. <laughs> neck and neck there. The lady men take the lead from the funny other beetle thing. Look at you go. Oh, no. My arms can't take it any longer. Ah, I'm taking the chicken flag, but I'm on my back. Oh, no! A beetle on its back! Best out of three. Come on, let's okay. have another race. <laughs> My fellow Americans, necessity is the mother of invention. In the summer of 1881, James A. Garfield, the 20th President of the United States, was shot by an assassin. I appear to have been shot by an assassin. Oh. The doctors decided they had to find and retrieve the metal bullet that had been buried deep in the president's back. And this is the strange but true story of how the shooting of President Garfield led to the invention of the world's first metal detector. It all started when a Scottish inventor called Alexander Graham Bell was quietly working away on his latest invention a machine which used electricity to send people's voices down a wire. Hello? Hello? Oh, that is tremendous! My new invention! It worked! Yippee! Actually, he was a brilliant inventor and he did invent the telephone, which is why the President's men gave him a call. Hello? 
Aye, I'll be right over. The doctors had spent days digging about in President Garfield's back, trying to find the bullet. Which was a really bad idea, because all those dirty fingers had infected the wound, making him feel much worse. Alexander Graham Bell to the rescue. Bell's metal detecting machine used an unusual effect he'd discovered by accident when he was developing his new telephone. He'd been working on ways of changing sounds into electricity, which he could then send along a wire. But Bell noticed that metal interfered with the electricity and made the sounds change. So, Bell thought he could use electricity and sound to find out where the bullet was. The bullet is in the president's back. The machine did detect the metal bullet, but it couldn't pinpoint its precise location. So the doctors gouged out more big holes in the poor president's back, which didn't make him feel any better. But Bell wasn't going to give up, oh no. He adapted his detector and designed a probe which could be inserted into the patient's wound. When it touched the metal bullet, it beeped. It worked, so he took his telephonic probe to show America's top surgeons. Sadly, it was all too late for the president. He died two months later from an infection in the wound. But Bell's new invention did eventually go on to save hundreds of lives. And also, treasure hunters everywhere can now seek their fortune. All thanks to Alexander Graham Bell and his metal detector. Right then, let's go and search for lost threepenny bits and hubcaps. <laughs> Get off, Gareth. You've got horrible, hairy hands. All the better to tickle you <laughs> with, my dear. <laughs> it's supposed to be scary. <laughs> Come over here and I'll show you how to make one. <laughs> my mechanical monster hand works just like a real human hand. Look, I can show you on this... Um, virtually finished version here. On the back of your hand, you have a set of muscles and tendons which keeps your hand open. And on the underside, you have a set of muscles and tendons which, when they're shortened, make the hand into a fist. And this is exactly how your hand works. You can find out yourself at home. If you um, put your fingers on your wrist and close your hand like that, you can actually feel the tendons in your wrist moving. Now, to make a mechanical arm, it's real easy. What you need to find is a piece of card, quite thick, then draw a line down one side, just off to one side, and place your hand on the card with the index finger lined up, more or less, with that line. Draw around your hand. When you get to the bottom side of the thumb, don't follow the thumb exactly, but bring it out a little bit so it joins up with the line. And then when you cut the whole thing out, you're left with something which looks like this. And what you've got here is a really wide piece of card for the thumb to hinge on. To make the hinges, you'll need a ballpoint pen and a ruler. Simply mark off the various segments. Push really hard so it breaks the surface. And what this does is score the card so it bends. Flip your hand over, take a rubber band which has been uh, cut open and lay it over a finger like that and then using a stapler staple that elastic band to the tip of the finger then pull it tight and then staple that rubber band to each segment of the fingers like so and then staple it down by the base of the hand as well and this should keep the hand open do that over and over again so you should have something which looks like this Flip your hand over, and you can see I've glued on some bits of straws here. Look, I've left the tips of the fingers clear, but to each segment I've added a strip of straw, and there are strips of straw along the base as well. Then, take a thread and pass it through these straws. They're acting as sort of guides to keep the string close to the hand. Right the way through. And when you get to the tip of the finger, like that, either tape or glue the string to the tip of the finger. Do that over and over again so you've done all the fingers and the thumb. And you can see now, when I pull the strings, the hand will close and the elastic will cause the hand to open up again. Then take your hand and fix it to 
a poster tube like I've done here and pass the strings all the way down to the bottom of the tube and bring them out through a set of holes in a piece of card that you've stuck on and make sure to bring the strings out in the same order as the fingers and the thumb on the hand. Now I've added some beads so it's easy to grip and then finally all you have to do is wrap the whole thing up in a bit of fur that you can buy from a fabric shop and now it's just the thing to terrify your best friend or in my case make my flatmate laugh. <laughs> Take cover, this is a big tornado, it's a large tornado. Tornadoes like this cause enormous damage. This week's big question, what makes a twister twist? It's all down to the way spinning things spin. If you've ever watched an ice skater spinning on the ice, you'll notice that while they've got their arms out, they spin really slowly. But if they tuck their arms in, they speed up. Now this is the same for all spinning things. If a wide spinning thing becomes a narrow spinning thing, it speeds up! You can see the same thing here. If I sprinkle these polystyrene beads on the water, you can see the water's moving only fairly slowly. But if a cheeky lad like me turns up and pulls the plug out, something wonderful happens. As the water drains down the plug hole, you can see the slow moving water on the outside gets faster and faster and faster and faster to the centre and that's where the spiral happens. It's gravity that pulls the water in and down the plug hole, so the power behind this twister is gravity. Use a fan to suck air up through a plug hole and you've made your own personal tornado. Imagine that the air in this box is spinning very slowly. Now, that air would speed up if we could draw it towards the centre of the box. And that's what the fan's for. Just as the water spiralled inwards as it drained down the plug hole, so the air should spiral inwards as it sucked up through the fan. Igor, start the infernal machine. Well, that's the fan on. Only trouble is, we can't see it, which is where this comes in. Yes, it's working. Now, to make our tornado, we've used the most powerful fan that we could find. In the fan world, this fella is a little demon. But watch what happens when I blow at our twister. Yep, despite the monster fan, our tornado is a wimp. Real tornadoes get their energy from warm air rising, which drags massive amounts of spinning air inwards to make the spiral. So what is it that makes a twister twist? Well, it's the air speeding up as it spirals inwards and upwards. So, have you worked out my precariously balanced pineapple trick yet? Violet, I have consulted some of the finest scientific and mathematical minds in the whole of Stoke Newington Church Street, <laughs> and this is what they've come up with. They reckon the answer to doing this trick is speed without touching anything but the paper, if I do it quickly, like with a karate chop, I'm there. hey Did it! <sighs> they were wrong, weren't they? <laughs> Look, give me that paper. Come here, I'll show you. Right. Paper, bottle and pineapple. And what I need now is a pencil. Yeah, I've got one here. You've got some calculations no, to me. I'm going to use it for the trick, actually. What you have to do is wind the paper round the pencil. You thought the secret was to do it quickly. But actually, the key to the trick is to do it really, really slowly and ease the bottle off the paper. I suppose the weight of the pineapple is actually keeping the bottle perfectly upright when you do it slowly. Never, ever underestimate the power of the pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> you did it! Yeah. Yes! Top job, well done. Right then, what do you reckon? A Beetle Drive rerun? Okay. Yeah, you be Ringo this time. No, no, I'm Fred. Fred? <laughs> <laughs>